Wasn't it just great watching the kids sing? Like my cheeks hurt, like watching, and you all have some cute kids. I'm looking at you all like, how did this happen? I don't know. Like, no. But who had a kid up here? Who had, who had a kid up here? All right. Anybody have a grandkid up here? Anybody come? Grandparents? Any great, great grandparents in the room? No, we'll just stop with the great, the grandparents. Um, but man, that was so fun. Uh, I, when kids sing in the service, I feel like I don't even need to preach. We can go home and pray. Like we're good, we're done. Um, but I am gonna, I'm gonna preach. Um, but it's gonna be a little weird preaching today because, I mean, no offense, but some of you all look real ugly today in your ugly Christmas outfits. I have there are lights blinking at me. Like it's amazing. And uh, you know, some of you didn't get accolades for what you wore. Um, but like there. There's the ugly hat ladies back here. Like, I don't mean to say ugly, but like, there's some ugly hats back there. Look at that hat. Oh my gosh. So many of you like went in, like all out for this. That's what I love about our church, all right? You guys just like go all out, like in the middle of worship, like this guy's lights were blinking on his head. I'm like, welcome to Bay Shore. Um, and I normally participate. Um, actually, I have uh, my ugly Christmas sweater I was wearing earlier, um, if you were here early in the building, and I, I wore this a couple years ago. I preached in this. I don't know if you can see these little eyeballs on this. After the service, all these people came up to me, and they're like, I have no idea what you preached about, because I was just looking at the eyeballs on your shirt. <laughs> so I'm going to spare you all. I'm not going to preach in this, but <laughs> I do want to say there's something even better in... And here, look, Mountain Dew in the shirt. So since your lights there distracting me during worship, there you go. Enjoy Mountain Dew, sir. Oh, man. Hey, um, the holiday season is full on right now, people. Traffic is crazy. The Lewis Dairy eggnog is flying off the shelves. People are scalping Shellville tickets. Did you know this? For tens of dollars. It is crazy out there, but you guys came to church in the middle of the Christmas crazy, so I need everybody just kind of get loose, and I need you to high-five three people because they came to church in the middle of Christmas crazy, all right? So everybody, don't get grinchy on me. High-five each other. I love it. You're getting loose in here. Hey, I I really am serious about this. Like, you just being here in the middle of the craziness of Christmas, that's like a Christmas present you guys have given to me. I'm so thankful to hang out with you guys in the most wonderful time of year. Um, Online family, I'm sorry you all can't be here, but we love you. Merry Christmas to all y'all. And uh, if you're online right now, I need every one of you to do me a favor. I want you to leave a comment whether you drink eggnog or not. So if you're an eggnog drinker, write it. If you're not an eggnog drinker, write it. Because I'm just trying to figure out what percentage of our online family is crazy. (laughs) In the room, how many of you drink eggnog? How many of you drink? You're into the eggnog? Oh, wow. Okay, listen. Online family, at least 50% of the room is crazy. They drink eggnog too. (laughs) Hey, I want to start out by telling you something. I normally like start out positive, but I'm going to start a little scary this morning. So prepare yourselves. What what I'm about to tell you right now, you you may hear that you may jump up out of your seat and run out of here and go shopping when I tell you what I'm about to tell you. All right, so in seven seconds, it might just be me, myself, and I left in this room. But I'm going to tell you, on my way into church today, the Shell Shell Brothers sign on the outlet said, seven days until Christmas, people. (laughs) Seven days. Who is not ready? Who needs some more time? You need some more time? I need more time. How is it that every single year, Christmas sneaks up on us? It's literally been on the same day for thousands of years. We're like, how did it get here? Uh, Now, for me, I I do not, I don't shop until, for Christmas, I don't shop until Black Friday. All right, now I'm curious, how many of you, you do some Black Friday shopping? You do some Black Friday shopping? Okay, uh, hands down. This is the real question I wanted to ask. How many of you buy yourself some stuff on Black Friday? (laughs) More people, by far. It's like, oh, it's 40% off. Merry Christmas to me. (laughs) 
So here's what Black Friday looked like in our house. Uh, my wife, who I love, she's amazing, beautiful, amazing, smokes you over, wife, baby. <laughs> On Black Friday, she's like, okay, I just want to, all I want to do today is I want to decorate the entire house for Christmas, and I want to get all of our Black Friday sh- Christmas shopping done today. <laughs> now, how many of you, you're, you're like an overachiever. You, you do the same thing. You want to do the same thing? Any overachievers in the room? From the rest of us, sorry, there's like three overachievers. The rest of us are just telling you, knock it off, all right? You're stressing us out. <laughs> and so I'm like, baby, I, I, I have like, I ate seven pounds of turkey 12 hours ago. I got so much tryptophan. Is that what it's called? Trip, 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 tryptophan? Tryptophan. I got so much of that in my system. I could be sleepwalking right now. Like, I cannot do all this. And I said, if you want to get all this stuff done, we're going to need to divide and conquer. And so she was like, okay, okay, here, how, how about we do this? How about you get all the Christmas decorations down out of the attic, and then she said, I will decorate the entire house for Christmas. I just need you to run down to Ocean City and pick up some Black Friday things I wanted to pick up today. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me you'll decorate the entire house for Christmas? And all I got to do is like go down to Ocean City and like pick up a gift? I'm like, you are smoking hot right now, baby. And so I got, I got all the Christmas decorations down out of the attic. I put on some Andy Williams Christmas music. Come on, who knows about some Andy Williams Christmas music? Any Andy Williams fans? Oh my goodness. Happy holidays. Woo. Last weekend, Nate was up here and Nate was like, my favorite Christmas album is Justin Bieber's Christmas album. I'm like, how are you even on staff right now, man? Like Andy Williams, man, it's classic. So I got the classics going. And so I, I, I got everything out. Then I ran, ran down to Ocean City and on the drive down, I'm like, this is great just riding down to Ocean City while simultaneously the house is getting decorated for Christmas. This is like happy holidays. This is how I'm feeling in my heart right now. And I went and did my thing. I had to stand in some really long lines in the rain, people. But the house is getting decorated at the same time. This is like perfect. So I come home and I walk in and I can still hear Andy Williams. I'm like, man, happy holidays. I can't, I can't wait to see the Christmas tree up and to stand under the mistletoe with my boo. No lie, I walk in. There's not one Christmas decoration up. (laughs) Not one. And I'm like, what? I'm like, we had a verbal contract. (laughs) And somehow Pastor Joel turned into Terminator, you guys. I'm like, Spotify, turn off Andy Williams, turn on Metallica. And so here's what happened. Stacy got sucked into the Black Friday online shopping hole. And she was deep. She had multiple layers of tabs, people. And we have a picture. I took a picture of her as she was shopping when I walked in. This is her. And so I was like, fine. I'll help decorate for Christmas thinking Merry Christmas. I'm like slamming the Christmas tree around. I'm yelling at the kids, like, don't put the ornament there. Go six inches over there. Light strands aren't working. We can't find Elf on a Shelf again. (laughs) And as is the annual family Tice Christmas decorating tradition, we fought the entire time we we decorated for Christmas. (laughs) Anybody else do this? Anybody else fight? (laughs) Yes. And when, when Stacey and I fight, we don't like argue out loud too much, okay? I just go into the Cold War. I just don't talk. I just grunt a lot. Like Joe Pesci in Home Alone. I'm like, I'm a grunter. Um. But listen, this is what I've noticed. The closer we get to Christmas Day, the, the fuller the calendar gets, the longer the to-do list gets, and the more grinchy I become, the more bah humbuggy I become. Anybody else? Am I the only one who gets a little girl? Let me see your hands, and you can point at the person next to you, elbow the person next to you, get them in on a fight right now. That'll make me feel better. <laughs> but guys, I don't want to be bah humbuggy. It's Christmas. I don't want to be grinchy, but I can get grinchy. And Stacey right now just said amen in her heart. And we're not the only ones who get grinchy. I saw this um, on the internet this week that I think really, you know, sums up a lot of Christmas. We'll put this on the screen. It says this, 
A string of Christmas lights that doesn't work is the worst. <laughs> Luckily, last year I put all their strands back in the bin with the good ones so I can be mad again this year. <laughs> That's Christmas in 144 characters, isn't that right? And so listen, my goal today is super simple. I just want to give you two ways that you can choose gratitude over Grinchitude this Christmas. Oh, buddy the elf, I'm making up words again, okay? Grinchitude. Everybody say Grinchitude. Grinchitude. So how do we choose gratitude over Grinchitude? And, and so, um, uh, uh, and I'm calling this message, are you Grinchy or grateful? Talk to the person next to you and say, are you Grinchy or grateful? Come on, deal with a smile on your face, all right? It's okay. Are you Grinchy or grateful? All right, come back to me. Some of you are like getting a Christmas list right now. <laughs> Putting in your lunch order on your app, on the Wawa app or something. Um, but are you going to your grateful? Because I, I have noticed, and maybe you notice this too, the more grateful I am, the more thankful I am, that has a way of like changing my perspective. That has a way of, of changing my inner bah humbug. And being grateful is biblical. All right, so I'm, I'm going to show you uh, what I mean by that. And, and if you don't have a Bible, uh, we tell you this every weekend. But on Christmas week, we should really tell you this. You, we have a gift for you, a stocking stuffer, if you will, okay? Out in the lobby, you can go and grab one of our Bibles. They're totally free. We probably should have put, like, little bows on them. Okay, Alana has enough that we could put them on all our Bibles. But if you don't have a Bible, grab one of those before you leave. That's our gift to you. Um, but in the meantime, we'll throw this on the screen. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 16. It says this, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Now, this next part, I don't want you to like check out on me, okay? even though you got some tryptophan or whatever in your system still. Maybe you're trying to fall, fall asleep. But come back to me on this next part. Be thankful in all circumstances. Be thankful in all circumstances. Four, let's read this all together on three. One, two, three. This is God's will for you. To be thankful in all circumstances is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Now, let me just give you a little insider, like, info to being a pastor. You all ask me a lot of weird questions. <laughs> weird questions. Like a question I've gotten recently from somebody who still attends his church, they said, Joel, the Bible mentions eagles over 30 times. Is God a Philadelphia Eagles fan? I really got that. I really got that question. I'm like, no, he's not an Eagles fan. He's a Ravens fan. Do you know who your pastor is? But y'all ask me some weird questions. Um, The number one question I get by far as a pastor is this. Joel, can you explain the book of Revelation to me? I got that last Sunday, actually. And let me just say this. This is a blanket statement. Can I explain the book of Revelation to you? No. 100% no. I am so confused. Well, when's our church going to do one of them series on that book of Revelation? Never. We will get that series in heaven, and Jesus is going to preach it, all right? Because I can't, I don't know. That's the number one question I get, all right? So that's my answer. The number two question I get, and I get this all the time, is this. Joel, what's God want me to do? What's God's will for me? Does he want me to marry her, or does he want me to be single forever? Does he want me to take the job? Does he want me to move to Hawaii? Yes. But you all are, I always ask me, like, what's, what's God want me to do? Okay, spoiler alert. The Bible doesn't say, marry her, take the job, and move to Hawaii. So what's God's will for you? I, you know, are those things God's will for you? I don't know. I have no idea, but this is still on the screen. But being thankful in all circumstances, that's God's will for me. That's God's will for you. That's God's will for all of us. And so should you marry her? I don't know. But we should all be grateful. Should you take the job? I don't know, maybe. But I do know we should all be thankful. Should you move to Hawaii? Yes. All right, let's just pre- let's pretend that's God's will for everybody. Um, but guys, thankfulness and gratitude, that is God's will for us. 
And there's a side perk. There's bonus points to doing this. Because when we're thankful, it makes us less bah humbuggy. Because have, have you noticed that the more grateful we are, the more happy we'll be? Anybody ever noticed the more grateful you are, the happier you are? And so I just want to give you two ways that you can choose gratitude over gratitude. And we'll put this first one on the screen. The first way is this. You got to praise God in the hustle. Everybody say the hustle. The hustle, the hustle of Christmas. Um, now, speaking of Christmas, how many of you know about the 24-hour marathon of Christmas story on TBS? Come on. How many of you know about Ralphie reruns? You know about Ralphie reruns? Oh, and we don't get tired. I mean, if you can show Ralphie for 24 hours of reruns, like you don't get tired of it. And so I was kind of hoping I could tell you like a Joel rerun story. Do you get, are you guys okay with one rerun a year? Well, there's more than that. But for today, um, okay, so uh, here's the rerun. It starts out this way. Um, in our house... We are, we are so Christian <laughs> that we don't have a nativity set. We got two nativity sets. Woo! <laughs> we got our bougie, nice nativity set. That's our willow tree nativity set. My aunt gave me our willow tree nativity set when we got married, and that one is super nice. I don't, anybody, ever have, anybody have a willow tree nativity set or new willow tree stuff? Okay, yeah. We, we wanted to, like, expand on it. Like get the wise men, but the wise men are like $1,773 a piece. <laughs> like you need gold, frankincense, and myrrh to buy a wise man, all right? So we didn't get the wise guys, all right? But we got our bougie nativity set, and then we got our cheap nativity set. Oh, buddy. That's the one we kind of set up in the corner so nobody sees it. You know, we're like, <laughs> hey, Jesus, we love you, but you're going to go over here where no one can see you because you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> And Stacy is the one who always like sets up our nativity sets because she's like way better at that stuff than me. And so um, a few years ago, we were, we were, I was getting all that stuff out of the attic for Christmas. I'm the attic. I'm on attic duty. Anybody on attic duty? You attic duty people? Woo! Yeah, attic duty. And we put all of our Christmas stuff in containers. And every year, it's a disaster in those containers. Hello. I'm like, what was it? A five, two out or two minute fire drill last year? Like we just throwing everything in there. But we, I got all that stuff out of the attic. And that year, Stacy said, "Honey." Can you set up our cheap nativity set? And I'm like, oh. So I'm like, I'll do it. And so I started like looking through the container and I got, you know, I got Mary and Joseph out, set them up. I got the, the wise guys out because we have the wise guys in the cheap, you know, nativity set. I got the, you know, the shepherds. I set, set everything up and I'm looking at it. And I'm, I'm proud of myself. I'm like, Whoa. then I'm looking at it. I'm like, something's weird. And baby Jesus was not in the manger. And somehow between packing up from Christmas 2015 and unpacking for Christmas 2016, we lost baby Jesus. <laughs> and I'm looking at all the containers and that year, listen, how's the pastor going to lose baby Jesus? <laughs> but that year, baby Jesus was not in our manger scene. And, you know, created some weird questions for my kids. My kids were like, daddy, well, where's baby Jesus? And I was getting creative. I'm like, well, he lives in our hearts now, Nora. That's where Jesus is. They asked me so many questions about baby Jesus. Like, I, was, I thought about putting a gummy bear in his spot, you know, like nobody. So they wouldn't ask any questions. But you'll be glad to know that we found baby Jesus in another container. So he was back for Christmas 2017. Woo, he was back in there. But we were so busy that Christmas, I didn't even have, to, I couldn't even find them in the containers. And, and here's what I noticed about this, this time of year. It's not just the most wonderful time of year. It's the busiest time of year. Isn't that true? Oh my goodness. Like you got to hustle just to like keep up, especially if you're a parent. Come on, parents. Wait, who's got a kid under, let's say a kid who lives in your house? Because that could mean 40 at this point. It's all good. Listen, it's crazy for a parent, especially a parent of young kids this time of year. I saw this tweet this week that I think pretty much like sums up what parents feel. We'll throw this up here. Hey, on top of all the stress during the busiest month of year, don't forget to dress up your kid next week for Grinch Day, Reindeer Day, Polar Express Day, Holiday, and Sheer Day, Sincerely Elementary Schools. Come on, parents, give me an amen if you know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness, like this, this happened to me this past week. Nora was like, dad, it's Jingle Bell Day, so help me. I'm like, what is that? Even, how do you dress up like a Jingle Bell? I don't know, here's, here's an ornament, make a jingle. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and so here's what I do know. The momentum of Christmas is moving so fast 
that sometimes we miss the moments of Christmas. You know, everything's so busy and like we can like, you know, get kind of caught up in everything and we can miss the moments of Christmas. We can lose baby Jesus in the craziness. We can lose our sanity in the craziness and we can definitely lose our gratitude in the craziness of Christmas. Now, speaking of, of baby Jesus, um, and when Jesus was eight days old, his parents, Mary and Joseph, took him to the temple. Now, I don't see who was paying attention last weekend. What culturally happened to the baby boy eight days after they were born? Who's not afraid to say it in church? Look at all y'all paying attention last weekend. The circumcision party happened. And so they took baby Jesus to the temple eight days after he was born and, um, you know, to make sure he could get his circumcision, uh, which by the way, say this every year, that's not a service we offer here. <laughs> Can't sign up for that on the kiosk, all right, please. Anyway, you do need to know this. At the temple that day, it was crazy. There were people everywhere because everybody was in town for the census. And so there's people on top of people. It looked like Shellville on a Friday night. I mean, if you're you're claustrophobic, you're going to be in trouble. And so there was a guy there named Simeon. Everybody say Simeon. Simeon. And Simeon was there because he was waiting on this promised Messiah that they'd heard about from the Old Testament. So that's where we'll pick up Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 28. It says this, Simeon was there along with literally everybody. I mean, it was so crowded in the temple. And he took Jesus, the child, in his arms, and he what? He praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He said, praise God. Or another way to say this, he said, thank God. Now, I love this part of the story because it's crazy in the temple. But Simeon slowed down enough to praise God and be thankful. He slowed down enough to praise God and to be thankful, which is why I'm I'm so proud of you guys for showing up to church in the middle of the Christmas crazy. Come on, like we gotta keep praising God in the hustle. We gotta keep being thankful in the hustle. And so say this with me, I'm gonna choose gratitude over gratitude. Now, I'm a realist. I know some of you are like, but you don't know my life, Pastor Joel. I got some bad things, okay? Like my life motto is Bah Humbug. Like this series should be just named my name. It's Bah Humbug, okay? Like after the service, I may get that logo tattooed on my lower back, you know, Bah Humbug, you know, what? Look, there's so many of us who can go get that tattoo. We could get a group tattoo rate after church today if we wanted to the Bah Humbug. Like, and so I'm not saying, I'm not saying be thankful for your situation. I'm saying be thankful in your situation, let me say that again. I'm not saying be thankful for your situation. I'm saying be thankful in your situation. First Thessalonians, can we throw that back up there for a second, Jess? It says be thankful in all circumstances, not for all circumstances. So I'm not saying, hey, just, just lie about your gratitude. Woo! Oh, I'm so thankful the car broke down on the way to church today. I'm thankful that the kids are all sick at the same time. Woo! you're a Washington Commanders fan, I'm so thankful that the Washington Commanders are in last place again this year. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying be thankful for your situation. I'm saying be thankful yeah. in your situation. Totally different. And, and listen, let me, let me give you some, for instances, for how we, we can do this. You could grumble about your taxes. Hello. But you can be grateful that you have a paycheck and a job, Right? We can grumble about how messy our kids are. I was doing that at 10.30 last night. Or we can be grateful that our kids are still close enough that they're within hugging distance, right? We can grumble that the next three months are going to be colder than a Hopkins snow cone machine. Or we can be grateful that we got a thermostat on the wall. We can can grumble about our bad knee, our bad shoulder, our bad whatever, okay? Okay. Or we can be grateful for our good knee or our good shoulder or our good whatever you got that's still working. You know what I'm saying? This is important. You can find reasons to be grateful in every grumble. Let me say that again. You can find reasons to be grateful in every grumble. Now, um, can I use the stage to get a brownie point right now? Is that okay? People, can I get a brownie point, Brent? 
Okay, yeah, Brent, yeah I'm in, all right. And so uh, let, let me start out this way. Um, on, on Thursday, I celebrated 15 years of being married to the greatest woman God has ever made. To the best mother on the planet, to the hardest worker I know, to the craziest driver on the road, <laughs> and to my beautiful bride, 15 years with you. I love you, baby. You are the best. 15 years. And that, my male friends, is how you earn one brownie point. Listen, if, if 15 years of marriage has taught me anything, it's that you can only earn one brownie point at a time. Now, you can lose 50 at a time. Come on, somebody. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so we celebrated 15 you know, years on Thursday. And you might be like, what did you guys do? Like, did you fly her to Paris? <laughs> Eat dinner under the Eiffel Tower? Did you rent out the Tiffany's jewelry store so she could go on a shopping spree? Did you like reenact the dance scene from Dirty Dancing? We're Patrick Swayze. I think we got a picture of Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Patrick Swayze would be me in this, you know, imagination. And you hoisted baby up, you know. Um, guys, we did not do this. Um, we went to Georgetown in the family car with our seven and nine-year-old in tow. Happy anniversary, baby. No, let, let me explain what happened, because I'm not grumbling. I'm really, really grateful for what happened. Um, so we, we had just gone on a vacation a couple weeks ago, and my parents watched their kids for like a week. And so we are out of babysitting credits. <laughs> They're not going to renew until 2030, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and so I knew my kids were going to be with me, and so I was like, how do I, like, how do I play this? And so I thought, okay, how about we go on the Sussex County Love Tour? And I take the whole family to all these like important moments in our relationship. And, and so like, I'll take them to the very first place. I saw Stacy in her Salisbury University sweatshirt. I'll take the kids to the very first place that I told Stacy I love her, the most romantic place on earth, the Howard Tannis parking lot. <laughs> I'll take them to our old house, the house that we moved into the day we got back from a honeymoon. And at each location, I'll stop the car and park out in front. And I'll tell the entire car, the entire story of that location. And at certain moments, I'll look over at Stacy and I'll wink and I'll say, I love you. And she'll say, it's too much. So we went on the Sussex County Love Tour. If that's not a good idea, I don't know what. Listen, I should be writing Hallmark cards for Hallmark. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and listen, I, we could grumble that, oh, we didn't get a night just out to ourselves so we could go get like $150 dinner or whatever. But going to all these spots and just talking about like how I'm thankful that God brought us together in all this place, that was better than a steak dinner. It was better. You know, it, it, listen, I think Georgetown is better than Paris, apparently. <laughs> they don't got the Eiffel Tower, but they do got J.D. Shuckers, and there's a pretty good burger there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I tell you that because you can find reasons to be grateful in every grumble. And so this Christmas is going to be crazy. You may lose baby Jesus in the nativity scene. All right. Or you know who is going to lose something? The UPS guy is going to lose your package. Or the family you want to see, they're not going to show up this Christmas. And the family you don't want to see, they're going to show up early and stay late. <sighs> but you can, you can be grateful in your situation, even if you're not grateful for your situation. And one thing we can all be grateful for is the birth of Jesus. And that Christmas is still the biggest holiday event on earth. And there's songs and there's music and there's movies and there's traditions to celebrate 2,000 years running of a Savior that was born to us. And so, how do we find gratitude over gratitude? We find reasons to be grateful in every grumble. Can you guys find some reasons to be grateful this week? Okay, here's my, my second point is this. Two ways to choose gratitude over gratitude is to praise God in the hassle of Christmas. Everybody say hassle. Hassle. So uh, speaking of hassle, there's another, there, uh, let's go back to the temple. It's hustle. It's hassle. There's people everywhere, like I said. People are on top. You think you're, you're tight in here? You may feel a little tight right now. Woo. 
you should have been in the temple, man. There was everybody there from the census. And so Simeon is there. And then there was another lady there named Anna. Everybody say Anna. 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 Now, Anna, this girl had lots of reasons to be grinchy. Because here's all we know about Anna's story. We know that she is currently 84 years old and she had been married for seven years. But her husband died after marriage, being married for seven years. And she had been a widow until she was 84 and she was childless. And, and listen, th- this is like 2,000 years ago. There's no Social Security survivor benefits. There's no, you know, this is a male-dominated society. There's not any self-help books for widowing. And so you got poor little Anna, but she went to the temple. And I, and I tell you that because as bad as life is, was for Anna, she didn't run from God. She ran to God. And I, I just don't know who this is for, but maybe you got some bad stuff going on in your life right now. You've been, this has been a hard year for you or maybe a hard decade for you and you don't really know what to do and you feel like you're in darkness right now. I want you to know that the Bible says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And so he's close to you. If you don't know where to run right now, run to him. He wants to help you. He wants to be your comfort. He wants to be your guide. He wants to heal you. And controversial take, I think God may be closer to the brokenhearted than those who are not as brokenhearted. And so he's close to you right now. And so in the story, Anna didn't run from God. She ran to God. And so let's look at verse 38. And it says this. She, talking about Anna, she came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph. And she began what? Praising Praising God. Now, I just imagine, this lady's 84 years old. And she's getting like, she's getting that walker. She's like, whoo. She's like an old person walking in the Cracker Barrel. Like, whoo, come on. She is ready, man. And she's like praising God. And she talked about the child Jesus to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. Now, quick question. Could widowed and childless Anna have looked at Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and been jealous? Yes or no? Yeah. Well, one more question. Could widowed and childless Anna have compared her nightmare life to their perfect looking life and been a little grinchy. Yes or no? Yeah. But instead, instead, she's like, I just choose to be grateful. And I don't know about you, but like what, one of the things I see as a gratitude killer is comparison. (laughs) Nothing makes me despair faster than comparing. And it's so easy now, right? Like 2022, all you got to do, if you want to compare, just go on Instagram. Am I right? All you got to do is look at the presents that they can buy for their kids. Oh, how do they afford those presents for their, it must be nice or must be credit card debt. (laughs) Or you can compare with your, you know, does anybody have the perfect neighbors? (laughs) (laughs) You know, like the one, the people who don't get fined by the HOA because they cut their grass, you know? Comparison, comparison is everywhere, and comparison is a gratitude killer. I, I know about it. It happens to me every time at Christmas time, all right? So I'm, I'm just curious. How many of you, um, you'd put uh, Christmas lights on the outside of your house? Come on, raise your hand if you like to look like Apple Electric and you like to raise the electric bill. Come on, raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Okay. The rest of us would like to tell you to knock it off, all right? You're making my house look bad. No, listen, I I love lights on the outside of a Christmas house, or on the outside of a house. Um, I love lights on the outside of your house. That that way I can, like, drive by and be like, good job, man. Enjoy that electric bill. I enjoy your house, you know. So true story, on Monday, I'm waiting for the kids to get on the bus, and um, we're sitting there in in the car, and my daughter, Nora, she's like, Daddy, our house is so sorry. She's like, if you looked at our house at nighttime, you wouldn't even know it's Christmas. I was like, well, if your mother would climb up on the roof and hang some lights. (laughs) That's how you lose 50 brownie points. All right, so now I'm at a negative 49 for the day. Woo! But she said, why do our neighbors have such a, a perfectly lit Christmas house and, and our house doesn't have any lights on it? And she said, and you work at church, daddy. 
I was like, well, you just worked your way out of the will. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> right, so. Listen, I told her, I was like, you know why our neighbor's house looks like that? Because they pay a decorating company to come decorate their house. And as you already know, Nora, your father works in the church. That's not in the budget. <laughs> But my neighbor's house does look amazing. I actually took a photo of it without their permission. So this is my neighbor's house. It's kind of out of focus because it was, it was nighttime. But they're, they even have like a Santa Claus on the top of the chimney, like going into the chimney. It's a, is this not good? Now, just so you can compare my house to their house, here's a picture of my house at nighttime. <laughs> Welcome to my casa, all right? This is called saving money on a lecture, man. Um, true story. Every Christmas, I look at like their house, and I look at my house, and I start feeling like, uh, must be nice. Must be, must be nice to be able to afford that Christmas decorating company. Must be nice. <laughs> and it starts to kill my Christmas vibe. And nothing will kill your Christmas vibe like comparison and jealousy. And all jealousy is, is when we take our eyes off the blessings that God's given us in our life, and we put our eyes on the blessings we imagine God's put in their life. There's a difference there, okay? Some of you need to go back to Spotify and re-listen to that, okay? And so I'm going to tell you the secret to happiness right now. You don't have to read a book. You don't have to listen to a TED Talk. You don't even have to move the elf on the shelf. You just got to look at the screen, all right? So here's the secret to happiness. The secret to happiness isn't getting what you want. The secret to happiness is wanting what you already have. Mmm. I heard it over here. Mmm. The secret to happiness isn't getting what you want. It's wanting what you already have. Now, uh, I'm going to end this way. Uh, I'm curious, how many of you are so old? Like you're, you're a 40 year old me or 84 year old Anna, like you're so old that not only did you get excited in the Cracker Barrel, but you're old enough to remember when lights of Christmas strands, all you had to have is one bad bulb and the whole bulb didn't work. Come on. How many of you know about this? How many of you lost your salvation a few times because of this situation? Oh my goodness. And every year. My job as a kid was find the missing bulb that doesn't work, Joel. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I, I get a lot wrong. One of the things I get right is I'm not a cusser. I don't cuss. But every year at Christmas, in my head, I went through the cussing alphabet at least 27 times. And I, I, like my fingernails to try to pop one of these things off. Oh, my gosh. And so one year I used a metal knife. Yeah, here's a picture of how that turned out. There. <laughs> so anyway. But it's crazy to me. We can have 199 good bulbs, and we got one bad bulb, and we go to light it up, okay? We do our, like, Clark Griswold moment. Come on, give me a drum roll. Give me a drum roll, please. And one bad bulb ruins Christmas, ruins the whole thing. Let me just tell you, we can have 199 good things in our life, and we do. You do. And we can let one bad bulb steal the light at Christmas. We can let one bad bulb ruin Christmas. And I'm not saying you don't have a bad bulb. You may have 17 bad bulbs. You may say, ironically, it's my 17-year-old teenager. There's a laugh back there that is amazing. I don't, I don't know who you are, but I need to meet you, all right? We can have 17 bad bulbs, and we let one ruin our Christmas. And I just want to end by saying this, all right? Christmas, Jesus didn't just come here to light up the world. He came here to light up your world. Even if you got 17 bad bulbs, he wants to be the light in your world. And so maybe this Christmas has been bad for you. You got some comparison going on. You've been jealous. The kids, they're driving you crazy. You got some other big things going on and your life is kind of dark. Let's kind of bring the lights down. Everything's kind of dark. 
in your life. I just want to, I just came to church today to remind you that only Jesus can do this. Only Jesus can make your world light up, even if you got a bad bulb or 17. And so I'm going to close up with this. What do we do? It's crazy time, Christmas time. What do we do? We choose gratitude over gratitude. In every grumble, look for what you're grateful for. Can you do that for me, church? Let me pray with you. Jesus, we're so thankful that you, you're not just the light of the world. You're the light of our world. And so some people in this room, they need you to light up their world right now. There's some stuff that's not been good. There's some darkness. And God, I pray that they'll walk out of here knowing that you are close to the brokenhearted. You are the reason for this season. And so God, I pray that we'll go to you and we'll take our bad bulbs to you. There's bad one ball, 17 balls, whatever it is. And God, just light up our world. Be our light when things are not looking good. And God, we are so thankful that we have so many blessings in our life. Help us to look at the 199 things that are good in our life instead of focusing on the things that either we don't have or that are not good. And so God, we honor you this Christmas because this Christmas is all about you. And God, I just thank you that you are not just the light of the world. You're the light of my world. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. amen.